So you've got a script from someone else that you want to run in Moto, or you have one that you previously have written, and you want to run it now. To do that, go up to System, Run Script, or hit Shift F5. And then you'll need to browse to the directory where it's stored. And I have that in the default scripts directory for Moto inside of my own folder here. So we'll run the Snap-on diverts. And before we actually play with the script here, we need to bind it to a hotkey and you can see I have got my command history up already and if you don't have that up it's underneath this command block uh, I'm sorry this block of tabs rather uh, properties channels and so on in the default Moto 701 UI you'll see this little window down here I actually have a script in here and by default that should say nothing it should say command unless you've ran a script which I recently have and if you click on that space between those two two blocks there and drag it up you'll get this command history and inside the undo's since the last thing we did was run that script let's highlight that and you'll see it has at symbol and then it's got a directory here which is actually pointing to that script file and if you wanted to you could manually type in or paste the at symbol and then the script name as long as it's inside the default moto directory or scripts directory um, or you could put in the full path. In this case, we don't want to mess around with that at all. We want to bind it to a hotkey. So right click on that line, map command to key. I already have it set to a key. It's control left bracket. We'll go ahead and set that again, hit OK, and I'm going to overwrite that. So now let's go ahead and play with that script. And now it's already turned on, snapping's turned on. It's set to vertex and snapping mode. And it also changed the action center to automatic. So let's activate the um, transform gizmo. And now whenever we snap on, or sorry, click on one of the verts, it will actually snap directly to it. So now we can move it around um, and rotate it all from that position. And if we wanted to, we can snap it to another background items ver vertices. And again, rotate and everything as before. So now we have done that, let's install two more scripts here. We'll do run script again, and we'll do the edge, snap onto edge. Then we're going to right click on that one and then bind that to control right bracket. We'll overwrite that again since I already have that uh, just for the sake of this video. And then we'll activate the move tool with the W key. And now whenever we snap on an edge, it will snap directly into the middle of those edges. So if we want to move from those positions or snap that position onto another element, we can do that. All right, one more script here. We'll do the poly uh, version of this. Snap to poly, and I've got this bound to control semicolon already, and we'll overwrite that one as well. This one's a little funkier and sometimes doesn't quite work as well as I would hope, but um, we'll give it a go and see how it uh, works for us. Uh, so turn that on. All right, so it's all set. Make sure it's action center automatic. All right, activate the move tool, and you'll see by default it always snaps to the middle of your selection. But if we click in on our element, yeah, it's not quite working out for us. You bastard. Well, the other uh, the other two work, or seem to work for me pretty well. Um, so if anyone has any ideas on how to make that one work, awesome. It works for me sometimes, uh, but not all the time. So, boo. Anyway, well, my point with showing that was, is that when you go between these different scripts, it always resets the action center to automatic. So what that means is if we do the, I hit the W key, if we do the vertex mode, right, the action center is in the center of the selection. And since we have no selection, everything is selected on this particular layer. So that said click on a vert all right so now this action center is right at that vert well let's change the tool here let's go to the rotation tool 
notice it bounces right back to the center. Um, so that's the only downside to using this. If you want to use all three, I would just recommend using the Y key and then you have access to the rotation and translation. Scaling is a little funkier since it's not based on selection. One last bit before I go. Let's say we wanted to be able to scale, rotate, and translate from the same position. The easiest way would be to, and we'll move this into a specific place. Let's say it needed to be snapped to one of these verts over here on this sphere. So we'll say it's that one there. All right, now when I activate the rotate tool, and I've still got my snap onto verts script running right now. Uh, so that said, it moves directly to the center of our selection, and we need to move that back. So we got to click back over there to get that where we want it, and now we can rotate it how we need it to be, like so, or whatever. Again, this applies to the rotate tool. As soon as we activate the rotate tool, it goes right to the center of our selection. And we'll need to click and snap that to the vert again. And now when we scale that on the whole, it works as expected. So each time you change the tool, it's going to go to a different, um, different position with Action Center automatic. It will go right to the center of the selection or the average center of the selection. And I should point out, if you're new to Moto, no selection means everything on this particular layer or mesh container is selected. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.